I don't know if you know it, but you should know if you don't know that one of the most anticipated features of Bear is about to drop. It is Bear for Web. And why is it the most anticipated? It's because a lot of people like me want to use Bear across all devices, including Windows machine. I personally have a Windows laptop for work, which I can't control it, and I have to use it. And it cripples my environment a little bit because at the moment, I just have to carry around the device with me at work to capture my notes and there's no way to see those notes and uh, record new notes on my Windows machine. Bearful Web resolves that issue and in this video I'm going to show you a comparison side by side at what a state it is right now and how it is compared to the desktop application and how far we are until the final release of the Bear. Stay with me and enjoy it. All right, first thing first, let's go through the blog post Shiny Frog posted about Bear for Web. And I'm curious about the features and limitations. So it says that it uses iCloud for syncing your notes, which means that the notes will still be private. And it requires a Bear Pro. You need to be a Pro subscriber to use the Bear for Web. Allow you to use core features of the Bear native version. Access your note, even I even where iCloud is blocked or banned in your work environment. This is what I'm most interested in. Have a public beta once we get closer, which means uh, this is now in private beta, so they're gonna have a public beta soon. Not have online collaboration for launch, which means that you won't be able to collaborate on the same note with anybody else. Limitations, they spoke about the limitations they have for this technology. Of course, it makes sense because the languages that web applications are written on there are different from the ones that you create your mobile and desktop application in Apple. Uh, Apple ecosystem uses Swift or Objective-C, which is an older language, and uses Apple SDK, while web versions having their own languages. Uh, and also, some of the commands might be intercepted and uh, won't be able to override in browser, for example, command one, two, three, in bear for desktop, it creates you header. Command T creates a to-do. While in bear for web, command T, by default, it creates a new tab in the browser. Command one, two, three, it behaves differently. So it makes sense to have some limitations on the bear for web, even in the future. I'm not sure how they're gonna go around it, but I'm curious to know as well. Now let's go through the interesting parts, which is the web application. It uses web.bear.app, as URL and you get the identifier, which is the identifier of your Apple ID. It takes you through the natural Apple sign-in process, which you enter your credentials, Apple ID, and it will enter your account. And once you're in, you see that this site the web application is completely identical to the desktop application, except for some parts that I'm gonna explain. First thing which is very noticeable is the setting button is missing, which means that you can't do some of this stuff like changing your theme, changing the fonts and typography, um, and some of the stuff that are available here in the settings. Beside that, these icons are not appearing. They're still not implemented. The new button and uh, central search is appearing here, but because it's a bit tight in space, it doesn't show properly. But the create new button is here. Oh, it's here, down here. And beside that, if I expand this section, you can see that all of these uh, main categories are presented. On tag, to do is completely functional. Any notes that are holding a to do in it, will be presented here. Today is presented. Locked is not functional because I think they are still figuring a way to provide biometrics or password for accessing the locked notes. Trash can is shown here, but it's not completely functional. For example, if you right click and delete something, you will get this prompt. That is not possible in your web application. With that said, something you just noticed is right click. So Shiny Frog intercepted and override these right click on this panel only. So if you right click here, it provides you some commands, which are also accessible here in these three dots. So if you right click here, these are browser properties, 
right click, sorry, right click here. These are also browser properties, but this panel gonna hold some bypass commands. This is Aqua and it's gonna be on my dock from now on. Oh wait, I didn't tell you the full story yet. Aqua Voice is a clever AI assistant which lives as a standalone application on your desktop and you can define a shortcut key to summon it. Let me show you some of its capabilities from basic to advanced. This is a title created by Aqua. Now let's start typing here. I mean, talking here. As you saw, Aqua Voice corrected everything, understanding the deep context. YouTube.com slash at sign Ben Cyberlife. Did you see what just happened? I provided instructions using natural language and he understood everything. Now let's try some difficult names. Aqua Voice has an internal dictionary that can store difficult name or pronunciations. Then it will replace it for you every time that you call them. Let's make a website that I can play Tetris on it. Created using Vue.js. Aqua Voice is a perfect companion for vibe coding as well. Create a button that can shuffle the next dropping piece. Meet Mason for lunch at 2 p.m. at 1.30 p.m. Aqua Voice got you everywhere. It's just one shortcut key away. Now you know why I decided to keep it on my dock. All right, let's check what else is available to us. You can see these pins, right? These are the pinned tags and pinned notes. These are presented, but it's not functional in the web application yet. So which means that you can't pin and unpin tags or notes. You got to do it in your desktop or mobile application. Then I can see that tags holding nested tags, which is functional. The icon is not presenting as I told you. Let's try a new note and give it a tag AAA with a sub tag AAB, which is a child. And you can see that without refreshing, it presented here and also the child item works as well. And at the same time, it was so quick to sync across the devices as well. So the bear for desktop also would present this new note. Let's try modification. Hopefully reflect this way as well, but I think it requires a refresh. Yeah, so the last time I tried it, it doesn't reflect automatically unless you refresh your web application. But it works and you can rely on it in terms of sync. The other thing which is not presented is this icon, which after you click on it, you get the statistics, table of content and backlinks. It is not implemented yet and just wanted you to be aware of it. The style bar presented as well and it's completely identical to what you have in your desktop application. So at this point, everything I'm gonna present to you is going to be identical to your desktop application. I'm gonna close this and expand this one now. All right, back at it at the full screen and the style bar, as I told you, is completely functional and all of the commands and everything you saw on the desktop application is presented here. So I'm gonna test a couple for you to see. For example, if I wanna add a, add a header, just H1, add a one, and then to the works, uh, order an, on, an unordered list also work. And something good about it is item one. You can use tab to indent your list. Then uh, you can make your uh, text bold, italic. You can highlight it, the color you want. And if you want to add a link somewhere, you can just press here and it opens a dialog for you. You can add title and your address. Then you can insert table as well. You can insert attachments it's gonna reflect on your note and it's gonna sync very quick to your desktop application. The rest of the commands here got nothing special in them, but code block is what I love to do and use. It's basically 
takes your code and present it in a form of block. Something you need to be mindful is the markdown is still available. So you can just, for example, create a code block, use markdown commands for creating a title, use markdown for creating highlight. use markdown and I mean use bold text and literally everything markdown is available just the thing that uh, I told you earlier at the beginning of the video is the command for example command T here now creates a new tab while on your desktop application it creates a to-do but for to-do if you want to use markdown you can still use the markdown feature of the bear all right, that's pretty much it. I don't think I missed anything noteworthy or worth mentioning. Uh, I'll keep you updated. I'll keep you posted about any important features that dropped about the changes of the bear for web. I'm really happy about this, to be honest, because it solves a big, big problem for me, which was on my work machine. Um, until then, as always, take care of yourself.